everything you need to dominate your fantasy football matchups this week and get that W, get on the right track. We've also got the fantasy face-off where, Mike, well, you're going to want to see it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, enjoy the video, leave us some comments. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday the 13th. <laughs> the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I don't even know if that's the right noise. I was counting on it. Probably the the have, right noise for Friday the 13th? Yeah, I should have gone. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm I'm down with what. You... Okay, that's I mean pretty, that's, that's that is actually better. Friday yeah, the 13th. No, that is better. Uh, you want to start it over? Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andy Holloway here, Mike the Fantasy Who Hitman, right? Like that? What is <laughs> like? Isn't it, that's supposed that's to be his breath? Is uh, that's the what? Just... Yeah, what's what sound is that? Because that that's the Voorhees sound, right? That's the music. No, right? that, I, let's that, turn to our resident movie expert. It's just a sound effect of like from when whenever the camera goes to his view. It's giving you the. Can I, can I tell you something? I've never, I've never watched any of those. Ah, uh, I hate, I hate horror movies. Those, I mean, I have no desire to be scared in any way, and I, I know that those are more like. I yeah, mean, th there's, there's horror movies that are there to just like scare the crap out of you, and those are like a little more cornball, campy. Yeah, yeah. I, they're gonna have jump scares in there, and just real. <laughs> I just thought that. Um, Maybe you know the rap scallion knew something yeah. about. Ju uh, Do we have Jason. anything on that? Are, Are you, you a, a Friday the Thirteenth fan? I'm with Andy on this. I don't really do the the horror film. Okay, so yeah. But I will say it, the there is a key 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 sound, and the ma 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 is some sort of recorded. It is something actually from the movie, so it is yeah. a sound that the guy makes. Jason. Yeah. Okay. So he's I mean, breathing like that. Yeah. I just I just don't understand. I mean, there's clearly a, a big desire to be scared. <laughs> I mean, it's people. Like, Brooks, do you you like the uh, the horror films? Yeah, your movie guy. Nah, I like a good thriller. Mm. Like, I like a creepy movie, but I don't. I don't like jump scares. I, my 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 line is, uh, it's above or below where Six Sense is. Like Six Sense is a good movie. It's it's spooky. It's scary, but it's not like jump scary. And I don't know. It's got some jump scares. Do you do you uh, partake in? The, I'm fine. Uh, I, I'm fine with them. the The wife is not. So, if I'm gonna watch one, it's it ends up just being me all alone. Me in all a dark alone. house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, speaking of scary, that football game. Yeah, let's get right into that. Oh, I mean, uh, you did not lose on Thursday night to. Isaiah Pacheco and Travis Kelsey, but they were the entire offense. Yeah. Moving it, the team down inside the 10 for no reason. Uh, going up against Travis Kelsey, I, you stare at where he's lined up. You track where Patrick Mahomes is looking. You go, oh, okay, here comes a Travis Kelsey target. Hopefully there's a defender there. No. No. Never ne is. Next time. Maybe there'll be a defender there. This No. <laughs> what are they doing? Like I, I know that he's shifty, and... I I think I, I have this theory now. Okay. Travis Kelsey doesn't even run routes. No, like, he doesn't. Like, they go, and he gets in the he huddle. He starts one. He gets in the huddle, and they call the play, and he's like, he just winks at Mahomes, and he and Mahomes winks back at him because he knows that Kelsey's just going to go out there and find an empty space and sit down. Did you see the play where Travis Kelsey pointed to a different option? Did you not get to see this? I'm, I, I so, watched the game. I guess I so. Just yeah, there was, it. it was just a moment where, like, you know, he was. Uh, I don't know how many seven catches in the first half or something. Yeah, but he uh, he's doing his thing, you know, going out and finding a spot in the zone, and then he realizes he's kind of more covered. So he when Mahomes, of course, looks right at him, and he just points to the right, <laughs> and there's Isaiah Pacheco in the flat. No one's covering him, but um, nineteen to eight, nineteen to eight, the. Uh, the Chiefs win the game. Yeah, the, Forty pass attempts for Patrick Mahomes. The Broncos defense, I mean, they they act they did show up. I mean, holding the Chiefs to nineteen points on the road, the offense was entirely Pacheco, who uh, 
Pacheco was great on the ground. He had six receptions. I mean, if you're in any kind of half or full point PPR, I think you're you're, you're happy. You're pretty happy, yeah, with, you're happy with what Pacheco did. Of course, you want more. I was happy. I just wanted to annihilate. You. Yes, no, I, I get it. And it's the Denver Broncos, so I did fully expect Pacheco to have at least one touchdown. But he, I mean, they, it was it was them, and then Rasheed Rice, who he's good. We, I mean, we we highlighted him on the waiver wire of the the snaps are not there, not yet. They're coming. But, but if if anyone's going to break out from this team, it's it is Rice, and we can, he came through with four for seventy two, and over the course of the season, I think that he is going to be the one. If any, it could be no one. Like it, it could legit be nobody in the wide receiver room, and they keep doing their switching out packages. We highlight Tony here. We highlight Sky Moore here. But if anyone's going to break out and be a seventy percent snap type of a player for the Chiefs, it, I think it would be Rice. I agree. He looks pretty good, and. Um... The offense, I think they need that. They need somebody else. Yeah, to they, be a, they do. Like It's one thing to say, okay, we're going to use McKinnon here and more here, and, and we'll do a Tony play, which, by the way, Kadari <laughs> Kadarius Tony looks like he has lost an, a, a level of speed. He was the player you always watch, and you're like, oh, the shiftiness, right. the speed. He looks like he's in a different, like a lower gear. Like it's not. I mean, he just keeps getting hurt over and over. Uh, I think it's like permanent now but the uh they need another threat because you can't like a smarter defense is not going to let you throw the ball to travis kelsey i mean i would think but i i would think any defense knows we have to put a player on travis kelsey and they I, would they even in the in the in the the matchups where they had someone like like sertan covered him every once in a while i was watching but he would never line up on him he would like be he would be back and then Travis Kelsey would yeah, cross. Yeah, I mean they just so, so the the cornerback's going into into traffic and has to catch up to him. It's like just put a person on him. So like, crying out loud, Kelsey still Kelsey for your fantasy team. Rice looks good. Pacheco was heavily involved on the other side. B <laughs> on the other side, it was one of the hardest things to watch, especially for the first half. There was ninety five passing yards for Russell Wilson. They they never tried to do anything downfield, pretty much at all. Uh, Cortland Sutton had a great touchdown catch on a, on a play that, you know, like doesn't succeed for most teams ever. Uh, Sutton a made a catch. great catch. Uh, Jerry Judy is out the door already. <laughs> I mean, he's gone. He is gone. Oh man. The, if you didn't catch the Steve Smith moment, it went, it went pretty viral on social media, but <laughs> Steve Smith was not having any, any of anything from Jerry Judy. Third tier. Third tier. It was rough. Um, so look, Denver. Denver's in the uh, circle to drain. Maybe Caleb Williams, uh, Drake May, and moving on. And and the truth is, I wanted to add like Marvin Mims and say like I in our league of record, I threw him on the roster yesterday, and I'm yep. like, well, they're they're going to trade Jerry Judy. Like he's gone. He's out the door. The snaps went down yesterday. Um, he's clearly being phased out of this offense, and the the team has acknowledged they're willing to move him. I think he's going to be out the door. So I'm like, oh, Mims is going to get chances. It doesn't seem like that's the way it's no, going to be. Fewest routes of the season for Mark. Yeah, Mims. so no um, Javante and Mc say, McLaughlin kind of split carries. It yeah. wasn't – like, Javante looked a little better this week. Yes, he did, and, uh, and the offensive line certainly helped him out. But I think it was it was nice to see that the fear was good, that it would be three players. You know, it would be McLaughlin worked his way in, proved that he sh he needs to get touches for this team. But then you'd still have P. Ryan and Javante coming back. But I mean, it, yes, P. Ryan got some snaps. He got two receptions, but he uh, he didn't have a carry. It's just Javante and McLaughlin. So that's at least nice that you know you can. Your your fab wasn't burned for nothing on McLaughlin. It's not a real high upside play, but when like next week or I don't know or I don't know if the Broncos are on bye next week, but I'm just saying during a bye week, McLaughlin you could put him in there and just hope that a big play happens because he's. He is a big play waiting to happen. Yeah, he's he's fast. He's got juice. Uh, Jaleel's got wheels. That's, yeah, you know, he, wheels. He, he can move. All right, we are. Uh, we're going to celebrate Friday the thirteenth. Foot Clan Friday. Congratulations, <laughs> Trevor. Trevor wins a hundred spooky dollars. Uh, I thought we'd give him thirteen. Uh, oh, no, sorry. $100, $100 gift card to FantasyChamps.com. 
Every Friday we give something away to a jointhefoot.com supporter. Trevor, congratulations. Enjoy. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, Deshaun Watson will not play. Shoulder injury. Okay. That's it. Okay. Amari Cooper is a, a, a nervous Flex. a nervous start. Yes. Um, we just got word that uh, Mike Evans is a full go for Sunday. That's great news. He, he was upgraded yesterday in practice. And so Todd Bowles, I think, commented on that. Would you rather play Mike Evans? Going against the Lions, right? It, or take the shot on Amari Cooper. Mike Evans. Okay. Just making sure we're all the yes. way all the way back. Uh T. Higgins, limited practice, still waiting on word. He was interviewed in the locker room and he said it looks promising that he'll play. Now it's the it's the player saying it. I mean, you uh, look, aside from Deshaun Watson, usually when you ask a player, they say they're gonna play through the injury. So it's it will be a very very tough decision to know if you should put T Higgins out as he has routinely torched people with I'm healthy enough to go go out there one play I'm not healthy enough to go I will be on the bench the rest if of the you game. had Amari Cooper oh Amari Cooper or T Higg uh, we get the news that T Higgins is a go yep oh man I think I play Cooper that's what I would do uh, Jeff Wilson limited on Thursday Miles Sanders didn't practice I think we're gonna see a Chuba week yep. Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson still sidelined. Roshan's the concussion. Today's a big day for Roshan. If if he's like if he does not practice today, it's going to be Deonta Foreman. Uh, Sam Laporta. This was big news. Yeah. Uh, big names from our matchups yesterday. We found out uh, he tweaked his calf and didn't practice again. I, I I'm not getting a lot of optimism around the situation. His head coach said his status is uncertain, which that's very familiar with what we saw from Amon Ra last week. So have a backup plan. Jameer Gibbs didn't practice. Seems like he's going to be gone again. Yeah. Uh, Amon Ra did full practice. That's great. We got some good news. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Daniel Jones didn't practice. He's been ruled out for Sunday's game against the Bills. Tyrod Taylor gets to a uh, revenge narrative, right? Right? Taylor doesn't strike me as a revenge guy. No, he's he's he's, he's, a, he's just like a good nice guy. He's kind of like uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick played for so many teams. Like you, you just have to get rid of the revenge <laughs> narrative because right. he's played for most of them. Saquon limited, Darren Waller limited, Chris Olave back to a full practice. Okay, with, I feel like there's a the lot of injury. news today. Yeah, well, so, it's, it's that time where people are starting to get beat up. And uh, Brooksy will break in with any other news that uh, comes across his vast marble news desk. We did it. So for T Higgins. He will be a game time decision. Okay. Gross. Okay. <laughs> oh, gross. All righty. Are we good? Yeah. That's no on. more news. All right. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy forecast. Into the forecast we go, part two, heading into week six. Yesterday we covered the Ravens, Titans, Commanders, Falcons, Vikings, Bears, Seahawks, Bengals, 49ers, Browns, Panthers, Dolphins, Colts, and the Beef Eaters. <laughs> uh, the London Beef Eaters. Uh, let's talk Saints, Texans, Mike, shall we? Uh, DraftKings, Sportsbook Line, New Orleans minus one and a half. The over-under is just 42 New Orleans is the only team in the NFL to have all five of their games hit the under. So if you want to impressive, if you want to know why Chris Olave has been a little <laughs> underwhelming, or um, you know, it's it's just not been a good ride on offense for the Saints. Not what they hoped for when they were acquiring Derek Carr mm -hmm. and getting back Michael Thomas this year. And uh, Olave, nice to see him back out there in a full practice. Is he a full play for you? I assume the answer is yes. Okay, Michael Thomas, uh, is he PPR only kind of situation, I mean, or what do you? I'm fine in in a half point playing him as a as a flex player. It's not you're not getting anything special, but I mean he's been very consistently giving you about eight points. 
Okay. And sometimes you are, you would like a guy who could give you eight points. Alvin Kamara. He, uh, in two games, he's 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 received a ton of work. Right back at it. Last week, I think what was kind of wild and impressive. I know the New England game was a blowout, but twenty-two attempts on the ground for Alvin Kamara. The target count dipped back down. They didn't need it, right? It was like correct. Let's burn the clock. But Kamara's a really good start. Yeah, he's a he's a great start. This is where we attack Houston. 27th, if you adjust for schedule against fantasy running backs. they It hasn't been as atrocious against quarterbacks and wide receivers um, as in they're, they're scoring a few more points against Houston than, than we're used to. If you, I mean, on the season, if you just take that number from Houston, they're third against wide receivers. But if you do adjust for opponent, that jumps to 12th. So th that, that gives me some hope that Michael Thomas and Chris Olave are fine. This, the Houston side is very interesting to me this week. Like we've been overall, like the sentiment on the season, very excited at what CJ Stroud yes. has done. Nico Collins has been a beast. Uh, but this game does not feel like a good one for Houston. I, it, it just agreed. It sets up as like you have a disciplined Saints defense that's seventh against quarterbacks, fourth against running backs. You have the injury to Tank Dell. Who uh, he did not practice. Thursday. Didn't practice. Very unlikely. Tank Dell is out there. Robert Woods is back, so he would be the complement to Nico Collins. But you're in a situation now where, you know, it's not a good matchup for Damian Pierce. The Saints defense doesn't give up a lot. Are you, are you playing Damian Pierce as a top twenty four option this week? As a top twenty four, yes. Just because of volume. Yeah. It's the matchup stinks, but it's like you would have to dip down. You know, like are you going to play, let's say Rashad White against the Detroit Lions or Damian Pierce? Very similar situation. The, the problem there is Rashad White's going to get some passes. I mean, uh, Damian Pierce. I I don't know. I'm right on the line there. I think those two are very very close. I, what What about the very disappointing so far, Ramondre Stevenson? Oh gosh, um, against the Las Vegas Raiders. No, I'm going to play Pierce and uh, Rashad White over Ramondre. Okay, and then what about the Colts? The Colts guys. Yeah, over Ramondre or over over Pierce? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I knew. <laughs> I knew what the real question was. <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I'll play Pierce for the volume. And right. they, they got a I couple. They got a couple offensive line pieces back. It didn't really help the efficiency levels for Pierce, but um, I think he had a few receptions last week. Did he not? Who? Uh, just one. Just yeah. one. Yeah. They, see, that's the problem. You'd like to see that get up a little bit. Yep. Maybe this week without Tank Dell, he'll be even more involved. But uh, Stroud's not in play this week. No, unfortunately not. Nico, I think you stay stay there with Nico. And um, is Robert Woods – would he, you play him or Shahid in a deeper league? Robert Woods – if it's a PPR, I'm going to go with Robert Woods. Like I'm, I'll be interested to see where he lines up. Like, does he take more slot snaps now that, that Tank Dell is out? You know, and – and then just get six to six to eight receptions, and then you're you just kind of take the the points that you take. New England is one and four, and they take on the two and three Las Vegas Raiders. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Las Vegas minus three. The over under is forty one points. McDaniel's v Belichick. How does it get to forty one? Uh well, <laughs> Patriots have been outscored seventy two to three over the last two weeks. Is that true? Do they seventy two? Yeah, so it was three that to can't three to true? three to thirty eight against Dallas. Oh yeah, zero to thirty four yeah. against New Orleans. Here, Mac Jones, <laughs> Mac Jones fantasy lines the last two weeks. Uh, we have against Dallas point seven. That's a zero point seven, and then you thought that that was as low as you can go. It is not negative one point six. Here's the thing from this game that I've been looking at, and it's like on the surface when you look at DFS, you look at defensive starts, your natural inclination from years and years of training is like, okay, let's smash the Patriots' defense in there. Uh, they're going to shut down the Raiders. They've been out – I mean, they, they gave up 34 points to the Saints last week. I genuinely think the Raiders are a better defensive play in this game than the Patriots' defense is. The Raiders' defense over the last three weeks – including a matchup on the road against the Chargers, gave up 23, 24, and 13. They gave up 13 against Green Bay. 
They're at home again against New England. New England has scored three points in two weeks. I think the Raiders are kind of the sneakiest defensive play of the week. They're they're interesting because if you adjust for schedule, they're actually not a matchup you want for your quarterback or your wide receiver. But tight end and running back is where things get done. So Hunter Henry, look in the world of tight ends, Hunter Henry is back in play. I get it. It was a zero. It feels bad. But this is this is the game that that Jason and myself, because I've I've kind of agreed with it of Ramondre's matchups and the Patriots matchups have been very, very difficult. You would hope that even in a difficult matchup, Ramondre can do something and catch some passes. But I think that this is the game that Ramondre kind of gets back on track and is is a top twenty four play. I I am on the outside of that take. Only because I think it could understand it could equally be Ezekiel Elliott in this game. You know, like part of the narrative for the buy case of Ramondre is this like, oh, you know, people are down on him. Because, why? Because well his snaps keep dropping. And his his utilization keeps dropping, right? Nineteen attempts, fourteen attempts, eight attempts. Like that's not a good sign for me. No. Like if he was underwhelmed like Damian Pierce, inefficient, but the same volume every week. Yep. And then you get a good matchup. I'm like, okay, it's Damian Pierce time. But this is like Zeke could have Zeke has equal odds to me of having the better game than Ramondre in this one. I'm not. It is certainly possible. the The snaps though, they were getting blown out in in both games. Like they pulled starters out. You know, I mean, Zappy finished both of these two games. So I I don't think just seeing the 50 percent snap count against the Saints, I don't think that tells the whole story because starters were pulled. Yeah, yeah, and so this is look, it's trepidatious. Yes, I, I agree. This is a this is a very high risk maneuver. I'm not trying. I'm trying not to start a Patriots player. I get it. Uh, on the other side, Jacobs is in. Adams is in. Myers is in. Yep. And then that's it. Yeah. I mean, keep we'll we'll keep our eye on Michael Mayer. Of he finally got some play. It was not fantasy relevant because it was only two for thirty nine, but. His highest snap share of his career so far, and and there was, I mean, there was at least a lot of chatter on the broadcast saying, "No, this offense," because Devontae Adams was not getting targets, and the uh, they were saying, "Well, the, the offense and Josh McDaniels," they said, "No, we we want to get our tight ends involved," which was it was very strange, a very strange start to this to the year of you brought in Austin Hooper, you drafted a tight end in the second round, and you're you're not even using these guys before last week. The Falcons had targeted the tight end position 43 times. The Raiders had targeted the tight end position seven times in five games. <laughs> so, yeah, fantasy relevance is not on the way for Mayer. He, he exists to potentially, his involvement, reduce the value of Adams or Myers a little bit. But I hope it, I hope they keep it consolidated. Oh, I yeah, mean, they, fantasy they, people Their do. offense was what the, uh, Jason wanted the commanders to be. Just throw it to Dotson and, and McLaurin. Two guys. Yeah. Yep. Instead, they target Logan Thomas and, and more players. Uh, quick break here, back with the Cardinals-Rams. All right, the one and four Cardinals travel to Los Angeles to take on the Rams and SoFi DraftKings Sportsbook line. Rams minus seven. Over-unders, 49 points. Um, really? It opened at 47? Yes, yes. Really? Uh, the... That is a little surprising. I mean, put implied point total twenty eight twenty one. I uh, mean, yeah, all right. And this is, uh, you know, this is a defense in in Los Angeles that hasn't done, you know, they've been middle of the pack in a lot of regards. Matthew Stafford's throwing the ball a ton, and I guess there's some confidence that Joshua Dobbs and the Cardinals figure it out without James Conner. So, I don't have the confidence the Cardinals get to twenty one points in this game, but. <laughs> But uh, Josh Dobbs has finished as a top eight quarterback two times. He averages 28 rushing yards a game. Uh, the tight end position is where the Rams are very weak. And the Cardinals have three of the, them they, they roll the, out there every once in a while. They have the best tight end. Ertz. Just incredible. Now, are you, um, like from a dynasty perspective, is has the ship just totally sailed on the hopes and dreams of the Cardinals? Uh, oh, of McBride? Of, of McBride. They... I don't know that they've left – like, they're not out of the bay. The The, the boat has definitely left the dock. Like the, still, You can still see it from the yeah, shoreline? Yeah, you can still see it. If I needed to catch up, I could swim 
right. and catch up to this. But that's a lot of boat. work. Oh, it's so much work. You ever had? You ever tried to catch up to a boat? No. No, so, I never have tried to jump into the ocean I and catch either. up I to just, a boat. I can't even – I haven't done it. I, I figure someone has. Yeah, no, I'm sure somebody out there. <laughs> but very, I have always – a small aside here. Genuine fascination. I do wonder how long I could swim before, like, I run out of gas. Oh. Like, kind of the right, whole, right, like, yeah, lost yeah. on a raft situation. like. Or when, when, you're, when you're on the beach and there's an island, you're like – could I make 100%, it? hundred percent. That oh, is exactly be, what be, I asked. Because everyone looks and goes, could I make it? Could I make it to that island? And there is a way too inflated sense of confidence of how far you could get swimming. Almost like a Jason can land the plane kind of confidence. Very much. Very much like that. I just feel like you, could, the answer is I feel like you I will could not. swim for a long time. But then, then you hear about How's these, your back float? It's it's mediocre. If, if you're I've gonna, always thought it'd be good, but I, I can't get it. I can't get it knocked down without... You have, I take you, in some water. <laughs> you have to be able to back float, like so you can rest. Yeah, I could rest. I could get to the rest. But the problem is, is that like people get pulled to sea on riptides, right? Yeah. And the riptide, the reason people drown there, it's not like the riptide like sucks you down to the bottom of the ocean. It like pulls you out to sea, and then you never get back because the, yes. you, the it's too what, what are you shaking your head at, Al? <laughs> The nightmares I'm, I'm gonna have. I, oh I, I, no! I go on a cruise tomorrow. Oh no! <laughs> and, I, and I don't want to be thinking about getting lost at sea. Well, just be careful on the edge of that boat. So yeah, just stay on the boat. You're good. All right, I'll do that. Although I, I am now envisioning a, a situation where do you have any excursions where you go to, like we're, we're doing a kayaking one and a okay, snorkel one. So you will be docking. And so there is this scenario where maybe the boat starts to leave. Oh, you have to catch the boat, and you got to catch this boat. I don't recommend trying to catch a cruise ship i don't think there's a way on and this was all from mcbride huh yeah okay the, yeah the answer is that was a wasted second round <laughs> pick for the cardinals <laughs> and probably a wasted late first early second round pick for your dynasty team. oh man oh man all right Keontae ingram amari di marcato rondale moore Sure. These are these are the three players likely to take all the backfield snaps for the Arizona Cardinals. And Ingram has been limited all week. He missed the last few games with a neck injury. He opened the season in front of DeMarcado on the running back depth chart. He is also currently Yeah, he's yeah. he's currently listed as the one because look, I'm I'm for that of a player doesn't just lose their job because they're hurt. So give him a chance when he comes back. And I think that given the chance, then we will have DeMarcado overtake him. That's that's how I see it. Hollywood Brown, we expect him back out there, right? Yeah, he's I mean, he's limited today. I think he missed on Wednesday, but it's it's an illness, so usually these guys bounce back. Cooper Cup, wheels up. Yeah, absolutely. Puka Nakua? Yes. Kyron Williams. Yeah. I mean, this he, should be a big game for Kyron. Yeah. I'll be very disappointed if he doesn't deliver in this match, the Cardinals cannot stop the run. I can agree with that. Twenty opportunities a game for Kyron Williams, and the game script should be Kyron. It should. I mean, it's a juicy matchup. This is, I mean, this is everything you want. You have a, a workhorse running back, great matchup. If if he doesn't get in the end zone, you're probably looking at, I don't know, maybe double digit points. the The receptions will be interesting because he, he really spiked in in week ten. He had ten targets, followed by seven the next week against Cincinnati. It has gone down since then, and the like with with Cooper Cup back. What do those targets really look like? Does it does it kind of level out at two to three targets a week? And it probably does. The uh, the big question, one of the biggest questions on our start sit tool. If you go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, dot com, we have a start sit tool, and we track the most popular inquiries. David Montgomery or Kyron Williams this week? Oh, give me Montgomery. Yeah, I think, uh, Brooks, you were surprised by that inquiry. You, it's just clearly Montgomery to you? Yeah. See, I think I think it is going to be a closer finish. Uh, I, I mean, Montgomery's who I would play, but the— In my rankings, they are back-to-back -back right now. You know now. what? I would, I'm would. i going to change that. You're going to go Kyron? I'm going to go Kyron. All right. Part, part of that is because I took a deeper dive look at the Tampa Bay defense thus far this year, and uh, they're at home. They've got a bye week to prepare. Todd Bowles. I, I don't know if it's going to be smooth sailing for, for David Montgomery this week. He's still a must start, but I, I do think Kyron's matchup, game script, it, it profiles to maybe make him a slightly better play, in my mind. Okay. Um, 
Philadelphia is 5-0. and They take on the 2-3 and New York Jets. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Philly minus 7. The over-under is 41. I think that line has moved. Uh, I want to I want to say that Philly started as uh, slightly lower underdogs, or sorry, uh, favorites. So I think the line has moved to minus seven. The over under is just forty one. That gives the Eagles twenty four points. The Jets seventeen. I can tell you as a Garrett Wilson manager. Yeah, that this that's really the question here. I, I think I never, it might be the only question. I never really know how to think <laughs> because I know I know that they're going to take the shots at Garrett Wilson. Will they land near him? I don't know. I mean, they should have last week, but yeah, they, they should have last week and they didn't. The three, Denver matchup, seven only seven targets, which is ridiculous. I was so disappointed. But three for fifty-four. Yeah, the, the, I think the entire world was disappointed because that was that was the moment. This was when you're going to actually get some good production from from Garrett Wilson, but but you did not. So it's been three. Three weeks, uh, I guess. The Kansas City, he did over. He had over uh, ten points, fourteen targets, but it's been, it's been just so sad. That's where that's where I am with Garrett Wilson. He's on my dynasty roster, and every time I I put him in because I lock him in, it's dynasty. I'm just sad. Yeah, I'm sad. Yeah, no, I am too, and I, I keep wanting to jam that name into my lineup. All right, we got some popular searches. Okay, Andy, these are. Oh, man. Not going to be fun ones, are no, they? No, they're not. Garrett Wilson or K.J. Osborne against the Chicago Bears? Uh, I'll play Garrett Wilson. Terry McLaurin against the Falcons? Garrett Wilson. Okay. Palmer against Dallas? Garrett Wilson. I'll, I'm fine going Garrett Wilson. I, here's I, think what people a world, don't... I think there's a world where you play K.J. Osborne above him. Here, Here's what I like about the potential this week. The Eagles are going to be ahead. The Eagles' defense gives up 39 points to opposing fantasy wide receivers. Now, they don't play the Jets every week, but 39 points is a ton. I think Garrett Wilson can get you 15 this week with the potential of a touchdown. You have you have to have a touchdown, or there's no way he's getting 15. Wasn't he pretty close without a touchdown the week before? No, 10.5. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I was 50, 14 he, he, targets in that game. Yeah, but week two is his only 15-point outing. And he barely surpassed 15 with the touchdown. That was the Dallas, the the huge touchdown play. Did we cover the Carolina game yesterday? We think, did, right? I think so. Uh, update there, Miles Sanders ruled out officially. Did we? Did we? Yes, Brooks? we did. We did. Okay, we did. thank you, Brooks. Where am I? <laughs> That's a Brooks question, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you weren't there. How would you know? <laughs> I, I'm locked in on this. In th enthralling Eagles Jets matchup. Hertz, Swift, Brown, Smith, Goddard. Any doubts across those five Eagle players? I only for Dallas Goddard because we've only seen it one time. But that one time last week, it was very glorious. It was nine targets, eight for one seventeen with a touchdown against the Rams. Tight end two on the week. I he was so difficult to gauge because you had a whole month of nothingness from Dallas Goddard but you know he's good like I'll go great Dallas Goddard is a great tight end especially for a pass catching tight end to have a full month to lose hope or of losing hope but and then getting to see it the one week that's enough for me I'm back in I will say this I don't think Brown and Smith have monster weeks together I think it's going to be now I don't I can't tell you if it's going to continue as it has which has been all Brown no Smith I mean, the way the year started, it was all Smith, no Brown. Right. And now we, we come into week six. And it, we're... it will def like, I'm playing all three with full confidence, but I know that all th the likelihood of all three of them having a game that you're happy with, it's pretty low. Okay. But they all have the possibility of having just such a big-time game. We did the Fantasy Draft redo episode on Wednesday. A uh, lot of feedback there. Brees Hall. We had some discussions about him. Uh, this is a matchup against the number one ranked defense in, in terms of stopping the run. If I'm Philly, I know what my job is in this game. It is to make Brees Hall ineffective. Now, Brees Hall is the unique kind of player where it's one play, right? Like you mm -hmm. can you can be ineffective for 15, 16 plays and then break off a big one and make your week worthwhile. Are you where does Brees slot into your rankings this week? So I have him right now at 18. Let me give you some names. So Brees Hall or let's go 
uh, Brian Robinson against the Falcons. Take the upside in Brees. Okay. Damian Pierce. We talked about him. Upside in Brees. Yeah. Then I, then I think you're playing Brees almost no matter what. Okay. Uh, what about uh, Kenneth Walker? Yo, oh, or Brees? Yeah. Give me Walker. Okay. Derrick Henry or Brees? Oh, man. Derrick Henry's against Baltimore. Baltimore. Baltimore, uh, uh, technically on the road. Uh, I think I go, gosh, I think I go Derrick Henry. The uh, one bit of news there on the defensive side for Philly on the road in this game, Jalen Carter did not practice today. No. So that would be a, that would be a big boon. Oh, for Brees if he was not active, it would. The Detroit Lions four and one taking on the three and one. Maybe we forgot that they were three and one. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Detroit minus three on the road, over under 42. Uh, we've talked about the Lions' rush defense, how good they've been. That doesn't make, you know, Rashad White, you're looking at pass catching as your opportunity. <laughs> With Rashad White, you're looking at hopes and dreams. You are that out on Rashad White. I, Is it this week or do you mean in general? Like he's had – This, he was, he this was, week okay, in Okay, he's the RB9 in week two. He's the RB20 in week four against a tough New Orleans defense like – and we watched that game. He made some plays. If you got running back 20 from Rashad White this again, week, this week you, I'll be so happy. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike Evans found out he's going to be a full go. Chris Godwin's Mike start of the week. Any changes to that uh, enthusiasm with Evans returning? Nope. The Lions, they, they shut down running backs, but adjusted for schedule. 27th against wide receivers. Over 35 points a game. And, then, and they are... They're pretty consolidated. It's going to be Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. If you don't want to be goosed, Kate Otten might not goose you. So there's your tight end on the Tampa side. Maybe. Although, maybe. I only mention it because the Lions have been bad against the uh, tight end position, and Otten, Otten he runs routes, man. He he does. And he Gets got, his cardio in. He got a touchdown last week. But he's been over 20 yards in one of four games. There you go. Jared Goff. This is a matchup. The Buccaneers defense just highlighting what I said earlier about Sure. Them as a sneaky play as well. Uh, they are number two. They give up 9.9 .9 fantasy points per game, schedule adjusted to the quarterback. Number three against tight ends, number 10 against wide receivers. Like they are, they're three and one for a reason. It's not all Baker just like lighting up the sky. The Tampa Bay defense has been pretty good, and you, you have a low over under in this game of 42. Has the NFL ever considered using one of those light up balls? I don't think so. Like you remember playing with those as a kid? Yeah, no, I, I, they're pretty good. They're awesome. Yeah. Can they're, we can we get that tech into a not into until, the Duke? Not until we get some sort of high resolution goal line camera. <laughs> That's step one. I feel like putting the light in the ball is easier. I I have watched uh, quite a bit of baseball, right? Yeah. Uh, over the last couple of weeks. Was it the when they they swept those loser Dodgers? That was part of what I watched. A nice. big sweep. A big whoosh. I. I can't believe they had a broom that big. The it was a big broom, baby. <laughs> um, this is not the point. What I was gonna <laughs> say is that some of the baseball slow mo camera, the like that they have, it's unbelievable. I don't know if anybody else has watched this. Can we just sell some of this to the NFL? I don't <laughs> understand it. Like when they're doing the like um, bang bang plays uh, uh, on first base or something, right? And you're trying to see if a guy slid in or. You know, right? It goes so high resolution, so slow, and we have none of this that we see on a weekly basis with the NFL. I just don't understand. I I think the NFL likes it that way. Man, they like the controversy. It's funny. I I was watching baseball and thinking to myself, like, they've eliminated ninety five percent of the controversy in baseball. You can challenge play calls. Things are very clear. Um, the only thing is the balls and strikes from time to time, but like. Over the course of the game, I feel like a baseball game is less subject to the, you know, the controversy we got with the uh, the Vikings and the Chiefs, where the 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 penalty not called in the end zone defines the whole game. Like, it's kind of refreshing. All right, uh, Baker Mayfield, you're not thinking about that this week. Uh, I mean, I would two I'd, quarterback league. I think I might. Would you like? Would you stream him over Dobbs? No, I'd play Dobbs with the rushing. All right. But uh, the Lions' defense, I mean, obviously they, they give it up. They kind of funnel it to the passing game. Yes. Montgomery is in. Amon Ra, if he plays, he's in. I don't – he's a full practice, but we don't have an official word that he's back. I know that seems kind of like a weird thing to say, but because of the nature of the injury, 
just make sure you don't like let Friday be the last thing you hear about Amon Ra. Yeah, I can agree with that. But full on Thursday would be a trend that he's going to go. And then Laporta is. Are you kind of um, are you terrified of this situation? Yes. Yeah, I being downgraded late in the week is more often than not a really bad sign of someone playing. With all that, if Laporta plays, the matchup's not great, but I'm still going to play him. Anybody else you want to talk about? Jamison Williams get more involved this week? Doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it too. <laughs> uh, the yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's anything else in the Sunday game. night. The Giants one and four. Buffalo's three and two. Goodness, the DraftKings Sportsbook line now: Buffalo minus fifteen and a half. More. So the over under is forty four, but Buffalo more. At, Buffalo's at thirty. The Giants at fourteen. If Saquon does not play in this game, do the Giants score more than three points? E, very unlikely. I, mean, I don't. I don't know how they do it. I mean, do you even want to play Darren Waller in this game? If it's Tyrod, do, do I want to? No. If it's but Tyrod I'm Taylor to. and he's got the groin injury, you are willing. I'm, now, what about all those alternate options? The Logan Thomas, the Zach Ertz, the uh, Kyle Pitts. Um, are any of those? Above Waller in your mind? Not currently. Um, and, and like just trying to think of maybe you got Logan Thomas off the waiver wire, but he's probably picked up now. So is Zach Ertz. So I'm trying to think of guys that like with the Waller injury was on Wednesday, right? So yes. I, I, I believe that was after waivers had run. So just trying to think through it of you weren't preparing to be without Darren Waller. That was a you that was an unexpected pop up on the injury report. So guys who are actually likely available on your waiver wire, it would be like Janu or or maybe someone dropped Hunter Henry. Maybe someone dropped Hunter Henry after the goose. Would you play him against uh the Raiders who it's a great matchup? Nope. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna, if Waller's out there, I'm going to play him. I that's that's where I am. If too. uh if a giant wide receiver catches four more passes, their name will be I'm <laughs> Sorry, you said if there's a giant wide receiver, so I started oh, thinking like of like huge. Yeah, I thought of like an eight foot man. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if they had an eight foot man, <laughs> yeah, if they had a little gigantor, if they had there. a giant man out there, they'd they'd do all right. But the, uh, what was it? The Yao Ming strategy that we've talked about before. <laughs> that, that's Jason's. Jason's. Jason's strategy is line up Yao Ming at tight end, have him walk five feet, and just hold his hands up. And I still think. It would it would I it would work for a play. It would not work long term because it break. would not work for a full drive. Can you imagine tackling Yao Ming? It would be easy. Well, yeah, because it's like those uh, AT-ATs in Star Wars. <laughs> yes, you wrap yes. the legs. Yeah, I mean, because he's T tie he's, his shoes he's together. So, he's so thin. I mean, he's gigantic and and athletic for his size, but versus a just a wrecking bowl linebacker who goes in low, it will not work. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Jason's not here to defend himself, but Saquon Barkley, um, if he's back, I guess he's back in your lineup. Just sheer volume, the Damian Pierce. That is correct. All right. James Cook, last week, negative four rushing yards. They could not get anything going. I watched that game with uh, close attention, and when they handed the ball off, he didn't have a chance. He only had five attempts, okay? So negative four yards, terrible. Five total attempts, also terrible. But I think you probably throw that one away. Yep, I do. Going to have more success uh, against the 28th-ranked Giants defense. Stephon Diggs, get him in there. Gabe mm -hmm. Davis, currently leading. He is on fire. Yeah, he's leading the league no, uh, with the most consecutive uh, touchdown games for a wide receiver, four straight. Josh Allen, of course. You uh, got to get the stallion out there. Got to get him what going. Do you do? Okay, okay, here's maybe. Oh, excellent. Don Kincaid is still in the concussion protocol ahead of Friday's practice. Dawson Knox is limited, but seems like he will play. Would you go Dawson Knox with Kincaid out over Darren Waller? Nah. <laughs> okay, so Darren Waller's in. Then. Yeah, that, it's like um, any of those top tier tight ends that you know he put up eight for eighty six last week. But it was a it was a great matchup. That's you want to. Yeah, but I think anybody that you drafted in that category, it's hard to put Dawson Knox out there. I, I agree. Mean, Logan Thomas, that'll be a tough one. Like if there was a someone you knew that had Logan Thomas and Darren Waller, that would be I I would not want to be them. Yeah, that, I get that. 
Owl. Right? If there was somebody over you, on who the, are, let's, let's go. Owl, who are you playing right now? Logan Thomas. Okay. Okay. You want to burn to the ground with Al Borland. That, now you know how. Yep. Uh, Dallas, 3-2. and two. Chargers, 2-2. Two and two. Fun uh, Monday night game, maybe. Uh, the Dallas uh, Cowboys, two-point road favorites. Is that surprising to you after last week's performance? No. The over-under is 50 and a half. Is the, no. I think it's where it should be. That's a, it's a fun game. The Kellen Moore revenge game, baby. Yes. Justin Herbert, of course. Austin Eckler, he'll be back. Keenan Allen, forever and always. Yep. Any I, uh, start sits on the Chargers side that you're thinking about, like Josh Palmer, Quentin Johnston? Um, Are you no, just watching, maybe? Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, I'm willing to play Palmer if if I paid up and I really need that third wide receiver or flex. I'm willing to go with it, not expecting a huge output. Uh, and then we'll let we'll see if Cuge can get the the snap rate up or not. Only 51 snaps last time he played. I think the I don't know if I like that nickname for him. No? Why? I just think huge it's kind of gross sounding. I think that's kind of the point. Oh, you you're you're doing that because it's kind of funny. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> it's a weird name. <laughs> but at least now that I know that it wasn't like a real nickname, I'm well, more on board. I mean, it yeah, I, I don't know that the it hasn't caught on. You think on. he's going to have a huge game? Uh if if let's see. Let's go through the box score here for uh for uh, old QJ Huge. We got 1.9 <laughs> points, 1.2, 2, okay, 2.3. If these trends continue, he'll be at three points in the next couple weeks. And that would not be huge. No. That'd be a, a small game. That'd be QJ. Uh, here's a crazy start sit decision. Dak Prescott. That's exa- this. That's where I wanted to get with this. Yeah, go for it. Of Like Tony Pollard is in, CeeDee Lamb is in, despite Mike McCarthy doing his best to – destroy the fantasy value of everybody for the Dallas Cowboys offense. Dak Prescott, it's been rough for fantasy football. Their game scripts have been just as wacky as can be. But the Chargers are 30th when adjusted for for schedule against fantasy quarterbacks. And like, uh, I'm asking the wrong person, but you're we're on the air, so you have to answer truthfully. Like, I have Jared Goff in right now. I don't like that matchup against the Bucks. It's not, yeah, we just talked about the over under and 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 he can come through because he can just throw. Like I didn't like Jared Goff's matchup last week, but I played him anyways, and it, he came through with touchdowns. Not not volume, but he came through with touchdowns, which Goff could do again. Or do you get nuts and get a get a uh, go with the Dallas Cowboys quarterback in a matchup that has a fifty and a half and you're point over me? under? I'm yeah, I'm asking cuz I'm sure people are You have Dak? I don't know. He's he's on the waiver wire. No one wants Dak. The honest truth, because unlike Jason, I do tell the truth when it comes to my matchup against you. I would like to face Dak. Oh, I understand you would like to face him because I would rather face him because I don't feel like the ceiling is what Goff's is. And Dak is the 21st ranked quarterback after being the 18th ranked quarterback last year. I know he missed some time. Dak is um, – he's yeah, got five I, touchdowns in five weeks. Yes. Again, it's been it's been rough, but he's he was needed in that game against Arizona, but didn't come through. He was needed – He should be needed in He was in needed this game. in the San Francisco he, game. And that's, that's the whole point is he's needed, and it's a defense that, again, 30th. I know. 30th against and quarterbacks. And a 50-point over-under, almost 10 points higher than the Tampa game. So – Look, it's uh, it's a. Uh, you got the steel underpants for the week. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I have them. I, I feel like you'd have to put know. them. You might have to put on the uh, the, the titaniums. Oh, there's there's one more level. Ordinary views of Dak and the Cowboys in this matchup favored on the road, uh, bad defense, uh, high over under. Everything peripherally says yes. Dak should be the play. Yes, the process. That you should have a says- higher ceiling. The process is Dak. Squeaky CD Lamb should be getting the ball more. Like th- there's a lot of, but there is a gigantic Mike McCarthy problem. Even a regular size Mike McCarthy. Problem. No, is this is a problem, man? He had career worst six point six yards per attempt. New play caller Mike McCarthy handling the offense, handling it all right. Oh, he's manhandling. The London Beef Eaters are a Canadian Junior Football League team located in <laughs> London, Ontario. This- how did this come up? 
I just wanted to transition. I'm just letting you know, like I heard a lot of feedback on the London beef eaters and that is a, it's a team, but it's London, Ontario. So just so you know. Okay. And then I was also informed that like Jacksonville, if they happen to go to London, like that is the birthplace of the Jaguar, the car. Oh, so what? So the, the place that has no native Jaguars, why are they naming a car that? Uh, well, no, no, those are Jaguars. Jaguars are the uh, you know the, the the creature. Yes, but the the jaguar. No, I. That's I, no. a totally different word. Okay, that's what I'm saying. But the car has jaguar has no connection with the animal. I always figured well, it did. Of course it does. Of course, uh, Mike, I'm making a joke oh, because okay. they pronounce okay. it so differently. It was so dumb. What is that ex jaguar? Jaguar. Jag. I mean, we already struggle with jaguar and jaguar. Why they, we, they, jaguar? They also do the th- jaguar. I mean, now this is a problem. If we had clown music, this would be the moment <laughs> for it. Uh, we're done with Bro- uh, Cooks and Gallop for now. Oh, yeah, yeah, N- until until we see otherwise. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you for listening, everybody. We do have a fantasy face-off coming up. A couple of injury updates. Miles Sanders out, Chuba in. Uh, Dolphins still mulling whether to activate Jeff Wilson. If they don't. What? Okay. Uh, Mike McDaniel said he would be on a rep count. So if they don't, this is where my start of the week was um, Mostert and I'd put Salvin Ahmed in uh, yeah. as a flex. I get it. Uh, Sam Laporta did go through the walkthrough. Uncertain situation. Odell Beckham playing. Najoku questionable due to burning off his face, but probably will play. Goodness. Because he did last week. All right, I'm looking forward to this. You guys ready? Yeah, let's go. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. Well, 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 I settled into Mike's favorite spot, number two, last week. Uh, It feels great, doesn't it? Yeah, I didn't have to do anything. I just finished second and didn't get the wheel of shame, and Jason finished first. So do you know what's coming? I do not. Oh, man. I do not. Um, So... Jason's roster blew the doors off of DraftKings. Jay- Jason's had- roster, if he hadn't, we both had Anthony Richardson. If he had not lost his quarterback, like, th- th- I mean, he cashed. He he showed me. He played this lineup everywhere, and then we were, l- you know, lamenting that he's like, oh, I put all this, you know, I I put a lineups in there, I put some cash out there, and I lost my quarterback. So all of that's just why. No, he cashed everywhere with two hundred and twelve points without a quarterback. His lineup was. Great last yeah, week. So, uh, Mike, it's your first time. Maybe you forget how it goes, but I'll remind you. Wheel of Shame. All right, what do I what do I do here? Oh, do we have an updated graphic? We do. We got a new Wheel of Shame graphic. <laughs> Why is shame so intense? <laughs> yeah, because we're getting, we're turning this into a real Friday the Thirteenth. This, this is no fear. It's a red rum font. All, All right, right, let's go spin ahead. the wheel. Wee. Uh, okay. We've spin got. I uh, see the cowboy geezer. Rainy day. Silly toasted. rabbit. Right, bro. What is this? Out, Out of, of this, this world. world. What am I doing? Oh my gosh, we're putting me back in the green mask. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is good. We've got. We've already got one man missing. Let's make it. <laughs> you wore the right shirt today. Oh, I'm gonna for those match. listening at home, Mike is now trying to squeeze his uh, kind of gigantic head, oversized head, into a a very t- <laughs> a very tight alien man. Oh, you look ridiculous, Spider Man! Oh man, <laughs> yeah, you do hey. have you're like Green Spider Man. But great news, I can't actually see. Oh, good. That means you'll be able to read your roster. Got a real frog situation going on here. Um. You want to get into it? You want to yeah, show let's these? go. And by the way, Jason is submitting a roster. Uh, and, Good. And Brooks, are you reading that roster? Yes, sir. Okay. It's so, hot in here. Yeah, that's the that's the punishment. Um, <laughs> oh, and no, no, I can't see anymore, guys. It's all foggy. <laughs> oh no! Well, that's uh, that's well, that's what happens. Let's move, move quickly. Yep. All right, my what's your quarterback, Mike? Five thousand. Whoa, Gardner. Min you shoot. did it. You did it. I'm take yeah, just wait till you see the rest of this lineup, baby. When you save that much I on know. your quarterback. I know. Uh Gardner Minshew against the Jacksonville Jaguars uh <laughs> at just five thousand. 
Uh, Brooksy, what does Jason have at quarterback? At 7,300, he's going with Justin Fields. Wow, he okay. spent up. Okay. And I, I settled right in between both of you. We all have a different quarterback. I am running it back with Joe Burrow at 6,300 at sure. home against Seattle. Sure. Joe Burrow, the quarterback this week. Mike, you're two running backs. Uh, so at the running back position, I have David Montgomery. Uh, okay, all right. Taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at something. He's at 7,000 something. Yes, that's uh, all you can see. One of my eyes is working. And then I have Raheem Mostert mm. against the Carolina Panthers at just 6,400. Brooks, you're nodding like Jason has Raheem Mostert. He has Re Raheem Wait, Mostert. How I do bet you, you do as well, Andy. Uh, what What's the other? What's his other? Uh, Di Mercado. Really? Oh. Yes. How much is Di Mercado? 4,900. Okay. Ish. Yeah, I didn't have those stones. So uh, the the moisture in my mouth is yeah. doing something with the nose. I don't know if it's just snot or if it's Oh, are you breathing like your own breath, but maybe it's, you're suffocating. No, I'm saying like my nose feels like it's just running. Oh good. Good. Well so, that's a punishment then. Who's wearing this next? Ew. Uh no one. We'll throw that away. Uh I do have Mostert. Yeah. Sixty four hundred. Yes, we course. all have Mostert. My other running back, Alvin Kamara, sixty eight hundred. Uh, going back to the well with Mr. Kamara, all the opportunities, all yeah, the yeah. pass catching. It's, it's a great option. Uh, give me those trifecta of wide receivers, Mike, because I know you, you spent. Here yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number one, Tyreek Hill. Yeah. So I've doubled up with the yeah, Dolphins yeah. against Carolina at, uh, what, I think 9,300. Yeah, here. he was 9,300. Uh, Josh Downs to go with. Yeah. I got my stack here at just 4,100. Yep. I He's don't, a good play this week. I don't expect a ton, but. I think that Gardner's going to give him a bunch of targets. And then who's this guy? Oh, Jamar Chase at uh, 8,300. So Tyreek Hill and Jamar Chase coming at you. Brooksy, who All does right. Jason have in his three wideout spots? He's got Cooper Cup at 9,000, and he's got the stack with DJ Moore and Marquise Hollywood Brown. Well, well, well. I look. I toyed with uh, some lineups this week that had uh, Cup, Chase, and Tyreek as my three wide receivers. It was tough. Uh, I, I get it. I ended up not doing it, but I do have Cooper Cup to match with Jason at nine thousand. I have Jamar Chase to match with of Mike course. at yeah, eighty yeah. three hundred. And here is where I, you saved on Gardner. Here is where I saved three thousand at Ooh. wide receiver. Ooh, Brandon Powell of the Minnesota oh, Vikings. That's a, yeah, that's great. Had That's six great. targets last week in the absence of Justin Jefferson. Yeah, I kept seeing him being like, well, we got an Addison target. Brandon Powell. <laughs> I went Brandon Powell because I, I feel like, I feel like uh, playing him versus like KJ Osborne was in play for me too this week. Sure. But you save uh, 1300 for maybe a similar game. Maybe. So, uh, Mike, you're tight in flex and defense. So I had to – Penny pinch here. Okay. Uh, I got Noah Fant. Oh boy, at the tight end position at three thousand. Which Noah Fant's actually had a couple big plays the last few weeks. I do have then KJ Osborne at forty four hundred against yeah. the Chicago Bears, and then I had to pay way down. But you know what could go wrong? Cleveland Browns at twenty two hundred against the San Francisco Forty Nine ers. So you must be zero dollar. Yes, because otherwise you probably wouldn't have chosen the Browns. That is the 49ers. correct. I, and it's it, not that bad. It yes, it's they're they're very very cheap this week. I'm not expecting big things, but there is a chance that it's just we when we were covering it's like this could be just a low scoring game. And, I love when you make really like valuable points looking like a an alien <laughs> from another planet. Uh, Brooksy, what does Jason have at tight end flex and defense? He's got Logan Thomas at tight end. He also has KJ Osborne in the flex and Patriots defense. Can you, is it, are these wet marks? I told you, like there's weird. No, those are nostrils. Those are. Did you draw nostrils on? Uh, it came that way. Okay. Those yeah. are that. That's on the bridge of my nose. So that nose. was uh, they're alien nostrils. That they're was not human nostrils. That was Logan Thomas, Fair point. Uh, KJ Osborne, and the Patriots. Yes. I went with uh, same amount of money as Logan Thomas, who was in my lineup early in the week. I shifted. I feel like Logan Thomas is going to get played a ton this week, and I'm entering this lineup in some tourneys as well. I actually went with Kyle Pitts at 3,500. Nice. I took Kyle Pitts after the performance last week, John o. Smith being a little banged up. that They throw to the tight end more than anybody. Could be a good Pitts week against Washington. My flex, very happy about this. Been in there all week. 4,300, Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard is my flex playing against Miami. They're going to be uh, battling back all game long. I yeah. think a lot of dump-offs. And then my defense, uh, 2,300. 
I could have spent the 22 on those Browns, but I went 2,300. Tampa Bay, we talked about this matchup okay. with Detroit. I think Tampa will be okay at home, and there you go. So we've we've got kind of uh, a lot of differences between these lineups this week. Yep, yep. But you have – so me and you have Chase, and you and Jason have Cup. That is correct, okay. and then you and Jason have um, – KJ Osborne. Yeah, but so I'm I'm uh, live with Tyreek. Yeah, you're live with Tyreek. Yeah. Both times I was live with Tyreek, I won. Good things happen. Yeah, good things happen. I um I really tried a lineup to get all three of those guys in there, but it was just so dependent on them. Like if they had any of them have a dud game, my lineup ends against you guys. Yep. All right, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use the promo code Ballers to get two hundred dollars in free bets instantly. When you place a $5 bet on any football game, that is the code BALLERS, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. I also want to encourage you, if you are playing DFS every week, go check out the DFS Pass. You can go to DFSPass.com. This is our, uh, you can get access to all of our cash and tournament picks, our projections, our DFS lineup optimizer articles, um, yeah, a lot of resources, and it's a one price for the whole year of DFS, including the playoffs. That's DFSPass.com. Mike, are you... This is how aliens move. You are moving like an alien. Now, are, are you still moist under there? <laughs> you do this. I am I am like a... Uh, just a raging delta right now. Kind of like a sauna? Yeah. A sauna mask? Yeah, yeah. All right, that is it. Good luck this weekend. My Visit face. Mike the Alien, BallersLive.com on Sunday morning. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.